Thank you very much. Uh, all right, I'm going to uh, start with a blues tune uh, that I wrote um, for a, uh, a movie that was made. It was called, the movie was called I Am the Blues, and the song is called I Am the Blues. And uh, the movie is basically a cinema verite. It was a, fr a friend of mine, a filmmaker from BC who lives in Montreal named Dan Cross, and he just got contacts to go down and follow about a dozen aging stars of the blues um, around for about six weeks and he just filmed them. He didn't interview them. There was none of this talking head stuff. It was just like watching them and hearing them talk about life. And it was be it's a beautiful movie. The best known guy in the movie is Bobby Rush, who's now about 87. He uh, got nominated and won his first Grammy at 83. So there's hope for us uh, still. And um, uh, the oldest guy in it was Henry Gray, who played piano for Howlin' Wolf. And, uh, you know, until Howlin' Wolf died, and then he still was gigging. He was 96. And a couple of years after the movie was done, I was like, I wonder where that guy Henry Gray is. I wonder if he's still alive. And I looked him up online, and he was actually at the Seattle Blues Festival performing that month. He was 98. He's dead now. But anyway, so it was inspirational. But this song, this movie was all about, it came, came, kind of came out as like that the blues was like a friend, and, and it was something like almost like a real being that was helping people when they were down and out. So I was I was on tour in Europe and I just was had just seen the film and I just started thinking about it. So I wrote this tune. And it's called I Am the Blues. When you should have known better but you weren't watching carefully now your life is tumbling Slowly into the sea Everything is blowing up And it was you who lit the fuse That's when I show up I am the blues When heartache and hunger are holding you by the hand And you're lost in you do not understand when the morning comes well you're reaching for the booze well that's my warning son I am the Cause when you're gone, I'm worried all day 
He was doing it into his 80s. Really? Did you do it, please, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> I have to get, talk to the dance union and my chiropractor before I sit down. <laughs> yes, Chuck Berry, a very interesting figure in music history for many reasons, but um, he, uh, he was definitely the first poet of rock and roll, as they, as they say. You know, those lyrics were, uh, were better than a lot of what was, came before in that, in that world. Uh, I'm going to play this, um, a couple songs on this banjo, which was purchased in, in Ottawa in the 40s by my grandmother. I never met her. She died in, before I was born, but she bought this for my uncle, who never played it, and it ended up in my aunt's basement which is, you know, that show Hoarders. And, um, but she went down and found it for me one day and I was so appreciative and I've had it for some years now. And it's, uh, it's 1901 Stuart Special Fleurbread. So it's got that kind of old tone and just great feel. So anyway, here's, here's, a, here's a song, a Randy Newman song actually about, about old time. Let's sing a song of long ago when things were green and moving slow. They'd say hi to you. Would you like to come over for tea with the missus and me? It's a real nice way to spend the day in Dayton, Ohio, on a lazy Sunday afternoon in 1903. Let's sing a song of long ago when things could grow. was playing the, uh, the guy with the guitar in the movie, Ronnie Cox, and he actually is a singer songwriter he's still alive. He's the only one left, oh no, John Voight is still alive. John Voight and Ronnie Cox, Burt Reynolds and uh, Ned Beatty run. I won't play that song, it can induce uh, post-traumatic stress disorder in some people. And I, uh, prefer not to, not to have that happen. I'll try it, I'll see if it stays in tune long enough to do this one. Pretend it's like 1843 and you won't care if it's out of tune because, you know. Where I've been, I cannot hide. Where I'm going, but I can't decide. But the ocean's by. The ocean's by. But I think I'll go out on the ocean wide. You won't take me by the hand. What is love? I don't understand. It's an ocean. It's an ocean wide. Well, I think I'll go out on the ocean wide. Snow is melting on the hill. Like my life, it'll slowly spill in the ocean wide. In the ocean wide, my guitar. I think I'll go out on the ocean wide. Oh, that's so funny, the tide down the river. 
else they'll run you round and round the ocean mine, the ocean mine. But I think I'll go out on the ocean mine. And be bad the other two. There it is. play a song for uh, we're talking about height five we're talking about the girls five foot four and uh, so this is a song about it also has height in it and uh, this is from 1925 um, and uh, it was actually this, this is a tip on on what song I'm gonna play it's written by Ray Henderson great composer of that period and Sam Lewis and Joseph Widow Young did the lyrics Ray Henderson wrote bye bye blackbird bunch of bunch of big tunes um, but this one, uh, Walter Mondale ran for president in 1984. His running mate was Geraldine Ferraro. Right. Oh. And uh, he got killed by Reagan. But uh, every time he came on stage with, with this one, with Geraldine Ferraro, they played this song. Even though Geraldine Ferraro was five foot four, but they played this song. Five foot two. As a blue but oh, what those fat feet could do. Has anybody seen my gal? Turned up nose, turned down hose, flapper, yes sir, one of those. Has anybody seen my gal? Now if you run into fabric to all cover with fur, diamond rings and all. Someone mentioned Mo Scarlet to me, and uh, I don't know if anyone here saw Mo back in the day. He was a guitar player from Toronto. He actually taught me how to play a um, fingerstyle guitar. I went to see him. I went to Steve's in Toronto when I was there in the late 80s, and I said, I want to learn to finger pick better. I'm doing some stuff, but I want to like, well, go see this guy. I gave me his number. I called him up. I went down. He lived on college, just off college somewhere there, and uh, he, uh, he went down to his basement, and he just was sitting there, and all he would do is play, and you could watch him play. There was no videoing, no nothing, and then he'd let you record a little snippet of a tune. So I watched him play, and he talked, and the guy could talk and talk and talk. So he talked forever. An hour and a half, two hours later, I got out of there, and I had this little recording, and I went home, and I actually learned how to play what he gave me. It took me like six months, and I came back, and I went down for a second lesson. He's like, he looked at me, he goes, you're the first one who's ever come back. <laughs> And it was partly because he talked so much, but partly because he, he couldn't learn how to do what he did. You know, most people just go, I don't know what to do. So this is a tune that I got out of him, and uh, this is from 1935. It's Billy Mayhew. Didn't read anything else. But this is a pretty, uh, pretty well-known song, I think. So let me see here. Just be sure when you say I love you, it's a sin to tell a lie. Millions of hearts are broken Just because those words were spoken I love you, yes I do, I love you If you break my heart, I'm gonna cry Just be sure that it's true When you say I love you, it's a sin to tell It's a sin to tell I said it's a sin to tell To this is my Shelton Brooks, who's from Amherstburg, Ontario, right down near Leamington, right uh, just uh, east of Windsor. There was a little African American settlement there. He was born in the late 1800s and he moved to the States, but he wrote a bunch of tunes. He wrote Some of These Days for Sophie Tucker, one of her signature tunes, but he wrote this one. Um, and, uh, and again, this is from 1917, 
seems like old school, all these changes, but at the time he was like pushing the boundaries. They considered him to be like avant-garde in terms of what he was doing com compositionally. So this is another one that most used to play. Oh, I'll be down in a taxi, honey. You better be ready about half past eight. No, baby, don't be late. Don't be there when the band starts playing. Remember when we get there, honey. Two step, we'll have a ball. I'm going to dance off both of my shoes. When they play those dead roll blues, tomorrow night at the Dark Hamsters. Stay with me, don't be with no other. Tomorrow night at the Dark Hamsters ball. Finally, I'm going to do another old tune. This is a classic. This is by a guy named William Taylor. They call him Tell Taylor, William Tell. He wrote about 200 songs. This is one he wrote. He was from Ohio, Finley, Ohio, and he's looking at the Blanchard River that ran by his house. And he wrote this tune, and all his friends said, don't publish it. It was 1908 when he wrote this tune. They said, don't publish it. It's not good. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. He finally, he just liked it. So he published it, and it became his biggest tune. Um, and I know we'll all know it. Well, I know we're all going to know this one, but it, and I'm just going to play the verse. Um, but uh, so this is Tell Taylor, okay? Down by the old mill stream, where I first met you, with your eyes open, dressed in gingham too. It was there. Sixteen, maybe nineteen, I get it's queen down by the old street. All right. So uh, I'm assuming that we're getting near to the end of this. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. And uh, I am going to do a couple uh, more songs, but uh, um, thanks everybody for uh, supporting the series, and thank you, Terry. And uh, Fraser on the on the video and uh, Barry, thank you for what you've done today. And uh, it wouldn't happen without that block. And uh, and thanks to Keith, Keith on uh, on the sound over there. And uh, I'm going to play a song about my home province of New Brunswick. And uh, I grew up in St. John. We had a cottage. My grandmother had a cottage near Shediac Bridge, which was literally a bridge about 10 miles up the coast from Shediac, and there's a little store there, a little restaurant called Shea Leo, where you get fried clams, and we went there from, she had it from 67 to 2000. She died January 1st, 2000. And um, so this is kind of about the rituals of there, and the big ritual for us as a family, cousins, everyone would come there was the bridge, who was gonna jump off the bridge into the Shediac River first? <laughs> and uh, the old people who would, would tease us about this or play with us. So anyway, this is the song. I'm going down to the shore, I'm going to live like before. I'm going to take that old familiar drive down the 134. Shay for some clams, flood my memory, break the dams. By the time they bring my order, I'll remember who I am. Well, it's still single file across, it's where we learned how to get lost when we were kids. In that slow summer heat, climbing up in our bare feet, and jumping off the Shadiac Bridge. A post office in a store where you never locked your door. Well, the world was more than quiet, you could hear the thunder roar. Swimming in the brine, comic books and fishing lines, listening to the old They climbed up in early May, just before the break of day when they were kids. For their death defying leap, well, it's all of 15 feet when you jump off the Shady Egg Bridge.
Yeah. 